profunda femoris artery profunda femoris artery is the largest branch of the femoral artery and it is the chief source of blood supply mainly to the muscles of all the three compartments of the thigh as you can see in this picture it arises from the lateral side of the femoral artery in the femoral triangle 4 cm below the inguinal ligament and behind the femoral vessels giving off medial as well as lateral circumflex arteries after arising from the femoral artery it passes posteriorly to the pectineus as well as adductor longus and descends close to the femur successively between adductor longus and adductor brevis and between adductor longus and adductor magnus so here it gives off first three perforating arteries and its terminal part pierces the adductor magnus as the fourth perforating artery to reach the back of the leg and what are the branches the branches of the profunda femoris artery are as follows muscular branches medial circumflex femoral artery lateral circumflex femoral artery as well as four perforating arteries the muscular branches as the name implies they supply the muscles of all the compartments of the thigh on the medial circumflex femoral artery which is a branch of profunda femoris artery leaves the femoral triangle by passing posteriorly between the pectineus as well as psoas major muscles then it passes successively between the obturator externus adductor brevis and between the quadratus femoris as well as the upper border of the adductor magnus here it gives off a transverse as well as ascending branches so the transverse branch take part in the formation of the cruciate anastomosis and this is a very important mcq point for you to remember and if you see the ascending branch the ascending branch passes to the trochanteric fossa and it take part in the formation of the trochanteric anastomosis next an important branch of the medial circumflex femoral artery called as acetabular branch this acetabular branch of the medial circumflex femoral artery arises before the terminal branches and enters the acetabulum through the acetabular notch deep to the transverse acetabular ligament and the posterior retinacular branches are extremely important and these are called as end arteries so the posterior retinacular branches of the medial circumflex femoral artery passes through the capsule of the hip joint and supply the head as well as neck of the femur and the medial circumflex femoral artery is especially important because it supplies majority of the blood supply to the head as well as neck of the femur by its posterior retinacular branches and next is about the lateral circumflex femoral artery the lateral circumflex femoral artery is the largest branch of the profunda femoris artery as you can see in this image it runs laterally between anterior as well as posterior divisions of the femoral nerve and divides into ascending transverse as well as descending branches the ascending as well as transverse branch take part in the cruciate anastomosis on the back of the thigh just below the greater trochanter and the descending branch run down along the anterior border of the vastus lateralis and take part in the anastomosis around the knee and this is about the lateral circumflex femoral artery and next is about the perforating arteries the perforating arteries are four in number they are numbered from above downwards as first second third and fourth as you can see here the fourth one being the continuation of the profunda femoris artery itself so now let us discuss what is the clinical significance of the profunda femoris artery the profunda femoris artery is of great clinical importance because it is deeply located and it lies close proximity to the femoral shaft there's a reason it is prone to the injury in fracture of the femoral shaft and the artery is also liable to the injury especially during surgical procedures of fixing metallic screws in the femur by an orthopedic surgeon by this we completed 
the profunda femoris artery as well as its branches and its clinical application.